50 minus 6. Come on, guys. Nine. Nine. Good. So what is it, uh, Jacob? Nine what? A squared. A squared B. Watch out for that, yeah? In year 11, if you don't write exactly the same, you're going to get in trouble. So E equals. And you just got 2AB. I might do this another color. Plus 8B. Okay? They're not like terms. Only the blue ones are like terms. So you can only put them together. Easy. Next one. All right, this one is multiplication. So whenever you multiply, remember you're just multiplying the big numbers and then the letters, you're just going to add the little powers or the, what they call indices there. All right, so let's multiply this. A negative 3 times 4. What's that, youngins? 3 times 4. 12. Good, but because it's negative, you make it a negative 12. Okay, so that's fine. And then the x times x squared. So x times x squared, what does that become? x3 or x cubed. You can call it that if you want. x to the power of 3. And then y times nothing or y times another y is just y. Why you by yourself? Why? Why? Easy. Easy. This will definitely be on the CFAT. Don't look at it. All right. Next one, next one, next one. I'm moving it quick, but that's okay. This should just be revision for the most part. All right. So the third one there, question C. Notice how you've got brackets and a number on the outside. Multiply everything okay, that's in the bracket with the number on the outside. Or you could also say multiply the number on the outside with everything inside the brackets. Okay, let's go with 4 times m. That just becomes 4m. And then 4 times positive 5. Okay, watch out for the operator or the symbol in front. What is 4 times 5? It is 20. Okay, that's the first one. So 4m. And then 4, 5. Next one, you've got 3 times 3m. So just multiply the big numbers. Francis, what's 3 times 3? Sorry? Six, nine, Good. Yeah. Not 6. No. Okay. And then m, you can't multiply with anything, so it just becomes m. Okay. So it's 9m. And then 3 times negative 2. Watch out for that operator. What is 3 times 2? Six, because it's negative, it's negative six. Okay, so I've done everything that I need to multiply. Now, you've got to put the like terms together. Okay, like terms. I can see the like terms here are 4m and positive 9m. And then you've also got positive 20 and negative six. So put them all together in the same spot. So you've got now here 4m plus 9m. And then you'll have... See that? 20, a plus 20, take away 6. Okay, hopefully the colors are helping you, but the colors show which ones are the like terms. Remember, like terms, the same exact symbols. So 4m plus 9m is 13m. Okay, and then 20 take away 6 is 14. Okay, good. Positive 14, not negative 14. Okay, there you go. If you can do all that, that's literally all of chapter 1. A. 1A. All right. If you haven't already, start copying that second lot there. And then we'll do them real quick. Now you work. Okay. Copy the second lot of the simplifier by cancelling out your common factors. Remember, we're doing a CFAT today, guys. So make sure you actually refer to this in the CFAT. Okay, you don't be asking me questions about what to do because this is what it is. On the CFAT. Okay, on the CFAT. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, let's go and do... The simplifying by cancelling out the like terms. Can I zoom in here or is you guys still copying? I'm going to zoom in here now. Okay, let's do that first one. So now this is division, okay? It's the opposite of multiplication, which is uh, this one here. So instead of multiplying numbers, okay, this does that. It's going to be dividing and then instead of adding the little letters, uh, the numbers on the letters, you're going to be minusing them, okay? So let's look at this one here. 36 mk squared 
divided by 9mk. Okay. Okay. All right, cool. 36 divided by 9. Start with the big numbers. What's that? Four. Four. Good. Now, normally, I've, read, I've taught you to write it like this. Make sure you've got like a number on the top because you've got a fraction here. Sometimes you'll have a, a number in the bottom that might be bigger, but for now, let's just leave it as four. Okay, so now that's done. Okay, 36 and the nine. Now, the letters, what do we do with the letters? We're minusing them, okay? When we divide, we're just taking away the little numbers on top. So what's one minus one? Zero, so you don't have any M's left, so none of the M's. And then what's K squared? Is that K divided by K? So you again, minusing the little numbers. One K, so you're just literally left with 4K. That's it. <coughs> Easy. You can put it over one if you want, but it's not necessary. We'll just leave it as that. I don't think we're going to put any questions that are more complicated than this. Okay. Let's look at B. Okay. This one's a bit tricky. We haven't really gone through it, but all it's saying is this whole thing, you must divide by three. Okay. The whole thing, divide it by three. So, what's 3 divided by 3? So, this and this, what's 3 divided by 3? Just 1. Okay, so you're just left with a 1. Okay, oh, don't need to rub that out. Can I divide A with anything? No, there's nothing. So, it's just 1A. Minus, what's 12 divided by 3? 4. There's your answer. You're done. Okay, all I've done is everything here, divide by 3. So, I can only divide... The 3 with that 3, A you can't do with anything, and that negative 12 with that 3. And that's it. Okay? Correct. Because sometimes, uh, actually most of the time, people don't put that 1 in front of the A. But I'll leave it there, just so you know that there's a 1 there. Okay? But you're right, Tina. Alright, if you haven't already, copy down the solving equations one, and then we'll do them together. Okay, copy it down, we'll do it together. This one is 3k. 2 with the 3k minus 4 in the brackets equals negative 17. So with this question, always start with expanding the bracket. Did I write the right numbers? Yeah, I did. Okay. Expand the brackets first. So multiply everything on the outside with the ones on the inside. This is exactly the same if you think about it as this. But now you're just solving an equation, yeah? It's exactly the same. So let's expand. Junior, what is 2 times the 3K? Multiply the big numbers. 2 times 3 is 6. And then can you multiply K with anything? No, nah, so it's just 6K. Cool. Next one is 2 times negative 4. So all of this. Okay, what's 2 times negative 4? Negative 8. Okay, because it's a negative. That's done. Easy. And you're just left with equals negative 17. Now, this looks very familiar to this guy here. Okay? It's really easy. So, let's solve it. Again, you're just trying to isolate K. You want to make K by itself. Okay? So, let's move the 6 and the negative 8. Always start with the number by itself. So, this guy. This is a minus 6. So, we bring it here. It becomes oh, sorry, minus 8. Here it becomes plus 8. Okay? So you get 6K. This is going to be a funky number, but that's okay. What's negative 17 plus 8? If you're really bad, good. But if you're really bad with it, just use your calculator. Yeah, no shame in that. Negative 17 plus 8. Negative 9. All right, easy. Choose your calc. All right. Next, you've got a 6 that you want to get rid of. Okay, this is a times by 6. So if I bring it here, it becomes divide by 6. Again, if you are so bad with your calculator that you don't know how to do that, put it in, but the answer should be negative 1.5. Okay, or I think it'll be a bit different on your calc, but that's okay. Negative 9, uh, negative 9 divided by 6. Okay, you, you might get that too, that's fine. Negative 3 over 2, but negative 1.5 is fine. Okay, so not too hard, yeah, not too hard, nothing too crazy. Last one, let's do C. So that's M plus 5 divided by 5 equals 7. All right. Uh, equals 7. 
Okay, m plus 5 divided by 5 equals 7. All right, so for this one, uh, the you're looking for a couple, th you've got a couple of things you're working with. You've got an m plus the 5, then you've got to divide it by 5. Then you've got an equal 7. So what should we do first? Oh, actually, what are we isolating? m. Okay, and then what am I moving first then? You've got a plus 5 and then divided by 5. You've got to get rid of both of them, those two. Okay, what do I do first? Yes, Ruby. Okay, this guy is divide. Here it becomes? Times 5. Good. Good. So you have now m plus 5 equals, what's 7 times 5? 35. Easy. Okay. And then you've got here a plus 5. Okay. It's plus 5 here. So if I bring it on the other side, it becomes minus 5. So that means your answer for m is equal to 35 take away 5 is oh my gosh life is easy okay that's all you're doing i swear if you can do all that you'll be all right pause it all right so now we're looking at substituting points which we've done a little bit of uh but we'll recap on it so we know what we're doing so remember Whenever you ask to substitute, all you're looking for is understanding what is this, okay? It is your x and y coordinates. So that's x and that's y. And all you've got to do is change x and y to the x and y here. And then checking to see if it makes sense. Okay, see if it makes any sense. So I'm going to use colors here. Let's say that that's, that is green and that is red. Okay, so I'm just changing x and y into here. So according to this, my y is 2, so I'm going to change y to now 2 equals, and my x I can see is a negative 3, so change x to negative 3, and then you've got plus 2. Now equate it, so you've got 2 equals, what's negative 3 plus 2? Can't do it, put it in your calculator, yeah, negative 3, negative 3, oops, plus 2, it should be negative 1, okay, now, does this make sense? No, it doesn't. Okay, this does not make sense. 2 does not equal negative 1. That means this point does not lie in that equation. Yes. Because y is 2. I'm changing y to 2. Okay, and because x is negative 3, I change x to negative 3. Okay. And because it doesn't make sense, so that means it's not in the equation. So you can just write, well, it won't make sense. So I'm just going to put a cross there. Or you can write not in the equation. Okay? Because it doesn't make sense. 2 does not equal negative 1. Okay, let's see if it makes sense in the other equation then. So again, substitute x and y into the x and y here and see if it all makes sense. So you've got negative 2. Okay, times, okay, according to this, x is going to be negative 3, so change x to negative 3. Okay, I'll put that in brackets so you know that that's what you're working with. Plus, uh, what color? Green. Oops, sorry, uh, red. Plus y, okay, y here is 2, so plus 2 equals 8. Okay, so let's equate that. Negative 2 times negative 3. If you don't know how to do that on your calculator, do it, please. 2 times 3 is 6. It should be 6. Right, so let's just let, make it 6. Because it's both negatives as well, yes? Yeah? So ne if you do it, negative 2 times negative 3, okay? Positive 6. And then you've got plus 2 equals 8. Equate it. What is 6 plus 2? 8. 8 equals 8. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So... In the, you can write that it's in the equation. Okay, not too hard. You're just trying to prove that these, this point lies in that equation or not. Yes, Ruby? You can, that's fine too. There won't be a lot of this in your sack, your sack though. I don't think you'll see that. All of this is just understanding how to substitute points. That's all it's teaching you. Okay. Next thing is now drawing your linear equation. So 
write down these two equations. You're going to have two of them here. But I'll leave that there for now. All right, so next one is this. Drawing linear equations, we've got two types, okay? We're going to draw using the gradient and y-intercept method, and then we'll do it also using the x and y-intercept method, okay? So let's start with this. Gradient and y-intercept. Remember your equation, y equals mx plus c, okay? And what that represents, m is the gradient, c is the y-intercept, okay? So m is the one that's always next to x, c is the number that is by itself. All right, so in this equation here, okay, what is my gradient, guys? Okay, what is it? Negative 3 over 2. So what does that mean? Anyone want to tell me which way is your line going to be going then? It's going to go down because it's negative. Okay, good. And what is my y-intercept? The number by itself. Which one is that? Positive 1. Okay, so that means your first point starts on 1 on the y-intercept. So let's actually draw the graph for this. Okay, there's the graph. Do a nice little Cartesian play, very nice. If you really wanted to, and I'll do this for you guys, put each unit a, a value of um, 1. I'll go on up by 1 here. Okay, just to make it easy for you so you know what's happening, yeah? And that'll be 1, 2... Three, four, I'll just go up to five. Okay, and in the negatives, don't forget to do that one. Um, don't worry, on the actual SAC, uh, or yeah, on the SAC, you should have a Cartesian plane already drawn for you. Okay, but you do need to put the numbers in. Oh, horrible. Okay, cool. All right, so y-intercept is 1. Let's start with that. Always start with the y-intercept. It's a positive 1. So remember, this is my x-axis. That's my y-axis. On my y-axis, so on this line, my first dot is on the 1. So I just can see that. So the 1 should be right there on the y-axis. Okay, and then my gradient, I can see, is negative right there. So negative 3 over 2. So instead of going up on the rise, you're going to go down first. This is my rise. That's my run. So I'm going to go down three steps. So 1, 2, 3. And then I'm going to go across. So my run is 2. Two spots. So 1, 2. So my other point should be there. Okay, and then once you've done that, Draw your dots, make a straight line, and you're good. There's your graph. Okay, not too bad. You only need two points when you draw your graphs, eh? Always, just two points. Okay, there's the other equation, but we're going to use the x and the y intercept for this. Okay, so copy it down, please. You guys are doing really good. Doing good. You ain't making it this far. All right. Shall I continue or are you still copying? Okay. We'll keep going. All right. If you need access to this, remember it's all on one note and I am recording it. Okay. So you can watch it again if you need to. All right. Question B here or this second part is about using X and Y intercepts to find or make your line. All right. If you forget anything about this, make sure this is one thing you remember. To find x-intercept, you change y to 0. To, to find y-intercept, change x to 0, and then you solve them. So let's do, for example, I'm going to split this into two. The x-intercept first, okay? So to change x, uh, to find x-intercept, change that y to 0. So let's rewrite our formula. So it's going to be two, negative 2x two take away 3 times 0, okay? That's what's happened here, a 3 times 0. 
equals six. Oh, let's put it there. Sorry. Equals six. And then we equate it. Okay, equate that. Or oh, solve it. Negative two x. What is negative three times zero, guys? Nothing. Okay, you can just leave it as plus zero, but there's no point. It just becomes nothing. Okay, so negative two x equals six. This looks very familiar to all the other equations we've done before. Okay, so from this point on, now we're going to divide that negative 2. Because it's times here, it becomes divide here. Divided by negative 2. Again, if you're not sure about it, do it in your calculator. But the answer is negative 3. There's my x-intercept. Okay, and if you wanted to write the coordinate for it, It's going to be uh, negative 3, 0. Okay, so on my x-axis, it's negative 3, 0. Now, let's do the y-intercept. Okay, the y-intercept. Remember, if you want to do y-intercept, you're going to change x to 0 this time. All right, so my y-intercept, so you change x to 0, so it's going to be negative 2 times 0. And then minus 3 y equals 6. Okay, so you're changing certain number of letters to 0 to find the intercept for us. Again, if you're looking for x, change y to 0. If you're looking for y, change x to 0. All right, let's solve this. So what's negative 2 times 0? Nothing. Get left with nothing. So all you're left with is negative 3y equals 6. Okay, negative 3y equals 6. Similar to the other equation, yeah? It's the same as this now. So you're just going to isolate. In this case, it was uh, this case it was x. Now we're going to do isolation for the y. All right, so it's negative 3 times y. So if I bring it here, it becomes divided by negative 3. So your y-intercept should be negative 2. Put in your calculator if you don't know how to do it. So the coordinate, so the y-intercept coordinate should be uh, 0, negative 2. A lot of work, I know, but it is what it is. Now we graph this. Okay, we need to be able to graph this. So let's draw our Cartesian plane. Remember your axes, yeah? This is my x-axis, that's my y-axis. Right, and if you want to, I'll do it here. Again, just put your numbers in. Okay. Negative 1, negative 2. I'll just go up to 4. Okay, and let's plot our point. So my x-intercept is negative 3, 0. So on my x-axis, negative 3, 0 is literally right there. Okay, my x-axis, negative 3, 0. So if you want, I'll even put it in here for you. Um, that is negative 3, 0, my x-intercept. Uh, and then my y-intercept is 0, negative 2. So that would be on my y-axis. Negative 2, right there. What? Oh. What do you mean? Oh, sorry. Wrong spot. Hey, I love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are champions. So you are learning something. Yes. Okay, I wasn't testing you, but well done for calling me out on it. Okay, and then my Y intercept is this one here. Yes, you do. Always have to draw a line. Always must draw a line. I'm actually confident that you guys will be alright now. Because you pulled me out on that. That's good. Okay.
Okay, so for this question, okay, you're finding an equation. Remember, your equation has to look like this. Y equals mx plus c. Has to look like it. So you're looking for two things. What is the gradient? What is the y-intercept? Okay, you need to find those two. Remember, when it comes to drawing equations and drawing lines, you only need two points, yeah? And you've got your two points there. So let's list out our two points. My two points are 2, 5, and then 4, 2. Two points, nice and easy. All right, from there, what you want to do is label your points x1, y1, and then x2, y2. Okay, and we're going to start off by finding our gradient. Okay, so let's find our gradient first. Remember the formula for finding a gradient. Gradient formula is y2 minus y1. Put it in brackets if you like. Divided by x2 minus x1. Okay, that's what our formula is for our gradient. So from there, substitute the points of y2, y1, x2, x1. So y2 is 2, right there. y1 is 5, so minus 5. x2 is 4. Take away x1, which is 2. Okay, equate that. 2 take away 5 is negative 3. And then 4 minus 2 is just 2. Okay, so there's your answer. Negative 3 over 2. So what that means is in my formula so far, I have this. Remember, my formula has to look like this. Y equals mx plus c. My gradient so far is negative 3 over 2. So you've got y equals negative 3 over 2 x plus, I don't know what c is. C is the y-intercept. That's the next thing we're looking for, the y-intercept. So this guy, what is it? So to find the y-intercept, all you're doing is just pick one of these points and put it in your formula. Okay, so either one of this, and you're just going to put it in here. Change x and y. So I'm going to pick, let's pick this one, 4, 2. And I'm going to put it in my formula. Okay, so you're changing x and y with this x and y. To find this guy because you're looking for C. Okay, so let's do that. X or uh, Y is going to be 4. So 4 equals 3, negative 3 over 2 multiply by, okay, multiply by in this case uh, X. Sorry, I mixed it around. Sorry, guys. This should be 2. Sorry. My bad. This should be 4. Oh, no one called me out on that, guys. Come on. Okay, so change X and Y into this X and Y. So that should be Y, and that was X. Okay, so from there, 2 equals 4, take away, uh, and then in brackets, 4, uh, negative 3 over 2 times 4. Put that in your calculator if you don't know. So negative 3 over 2 multiplied by 4. That equals negative 6. So negative 6 plus C. Okay, remember, you're looking for C, the y-intercept. So isolate that C. Make it by itself. This is a minus 6. So if you bring it here, it becomes plus 6. So you've got 2 plus 6 equals C. So that means C in this case should be 8. Okay. Hopefully you guys can see that. So in my formula, final bit for the equation, y equals negative 3 over 2x, right? Because your formula, your formula you're looking for gradient and y-intercept. My c is 8. Okay, and there is my equation. 